Those who follow the pre-tribulation rapture theory believe that the seven-year covenant spoken of in Daniel are seven years of God's judgment. They combine tribulation and wrath and call it the seven-year tribulation. They also believe, and rightly so, that we as believers are not appointed to God's wrath, as it says in 1 Thessalonians 5.9, which is why they believe we are raptured before the seven years begin. But nowhere in the Bible does it say we will not face tribulation. In fact, Jesus promises us tribulation just like the apostles and disciples faced in his days. We are no exception. Some say, do you think God's going to allow his bride to get all beat up before the marriage supper of the Lamb? Well, he's been allowing it for 2,000 years, so yeah. Today we will show you from Scripture that God's wrath is not all seven years, and we'll do this with three points. First, we see in Revelation 6, 9-11, that when the fifth seal is opened, the martyrs of Christ cried out in a loud voice, How long, O Lord, holy and true, until you judge those who live on the earth and avenge our blood? And then they are told to wait a little longer until all the martyrs had been killed before God's judgment and wrath would be poured out. So the first point I want to make is that we are at the fifth steel and God's judgment has not started, which precedes his wrath being poured out. It's still to come. Neither the judgment or wrath of God have started yet, so it most certainly did not start at the beginning of the seven years. Second, we see in Revelation 14.9 that the third angel says that those that have taken the mark of the beast will experience God's anger and wrath. So if the wrath of God had already started before this verse, that would mean people were already experiencing it. So the wrath of God must take place after this angel speaks, the third angel, because it's a conditional statement saying that if someone takes the mark, then they will experience wrath. It couldn't have taken place earlier in Revelation, for example, during the four horsemen. This completely eliminates the possibility of God's wrath being the entire seven years. And third, we see that after the sixth seal is opened in Revelation 6.12, this is when people declare that the wrath of the Lord has come. They say in verses 16 and 17, And they said to the mountains and the rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of the one seated on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of their wrath has come, and who is able to withstand it? Notice, these people also see him seated on the throne. It's not a secret. And they confirm his wrath starts now, which is after the sixth seal. So once again, this is clear proof from Scripture that God's judgment and wrath do not start at the beginning of the seven years. We have to remember that wrath and tribulation are different. Jesus said we would face tribulation and all the world would hate us because of his name. But we are not appointed to God's wrath, which is why we are raptured before that, after the sixth seal. Now, on a side note, one more interesting point is, just as we saw, the sun and moon are darkened after the sixth seal is open in Revelation 6, and we see that Jesus returns at that time, confirmed in Matthew 24, that is, after the sun and moon are darkened. This is not his second coming because that's impossible to happen after the sixth seal. It happens at the end of the seven years. The interesting thing is that the day of the Lord, which is when God's wrath starts, also starts at the same time, as we see in Isaiah 13, 9 to 10. It tells us that the sun and moon are darkened first in verse 10. We see this again in Joel 2, 31. So Jesus gathers the elect after the sun is darkened and the moon turned to blood, and the day of the Lord starts after the sun is darkened and the moon turned to blood. I think this shows clearly that the day of Christ and the day of the Lord are the same day, and that's after the sixth seal. Believers get raptured and God's wrath starts shortly after, as we saw confirmed at the start of this video. So I hope you found this video helpful. Remember, it's not to cause arguments, and these aren't my opinions. I'm simply reading what the Bible says.